The uh, special counsel, John Durham, is a real plotter. He's a, um, let's get the facts first, let's um, cross every T, dot every I. He was very careful not to do anything before the election. This is kind of, you must almost call it the Republican mode of investigation. The Democratic mode is the opposite. Indict first, lock people up, we'll get some evidence on them later. So Durham, in this sense, has been, uh, well, a bit of a disappointment. He's the kind of guy who goes hunting and he's got, you know, all these targets out there, all these buffalo just waiting to be taken out. No, he just shoots one of them. Well, um, I guess this is Durham's second uh, carcass. The first one was the FBI um, agent or officer, um, Kleinsmith, uh, who um, was busted by Durham uh, several months ago. But now Durham has indicted a top Democratic lawyer, a guy named Michael Sussman. Uh, and Sussman is part of a Democratic uh, law firm, a firm that was, uh, in fact, contracted to the Hillary campaign. This is a guy working in close tandem uh, with the Hillary people to do what? Well, it turns out to fake, to concoct, uh, to create a bogus narrative right before the, tw the 2016 election uh, against Trump. Uh, and the value of Durham's indictment, it's a detailed indictment, I've read through it very carefully, is you can sort of see the different, how, how this works, how the Democrats have great confidence that they can count on the FBI to go along, play along, and the media. So essentially what you have is you have Hillary Clinton through Sussman putting out a lie, the lie is then picked up by the FBI. Then they leak to the media. The FBI is doing an investigation. The media blares this out. And then Hillary herself weighs in and goes, this is very disturbing news that I'm seeing in the media. News that it turns out her team put out. So this is, uh, this is kind of delicious stuff to look at because you see this is basically like, you know, Satan and his little devils and how they work together to corrupt the human race. Now, this is not, by the way, the Clinton team's first foray into this. Their big foray was the bogus steel dossier that, by the way, they paid millions of dollars to commission. They tried to conceal their role in it. In fact, when they, um, when they paid for the steel dossier, they uh, marked it as legal fees. So no one would know that they're paying really ultimately for a bogus document run by this British spy, Christopher Steele, against Trump and use that as the basis for getting FISA warrants and so on. So this story involving Sussman is part of that larger effort to frame Trump. It's a big frame up. So let's let's look at how this frame up works because it involves a lot of different parties. Now, on September 16, 2016, Michael Sussman, a prominent lawyer, meets uh, with the FBI. Uh, he meets with James Baker of the FBI and he tells him, listen, I'm coming to you uh, not uh, as a representative of any organization, I'm coming to you as a concerned citizen because I have evidence uh, that the Trump campaign uh, is involved, is, is colluding, you might say, uh, with a Russian uh, bank, uh, a Russian-based bank called Alpha Bank. And uh, this guy goes, uh, Sussman goes, oh, here are the documents, you can take a look at them. Now, let's, let's back up and look at how these documents got generated. Turns out that Sussman did not disclose to the FBI that he was being paid uh, by the Clinton campaign. Now, how do we know that? How does Durham know that? Because he has the invoices. Sussman actually billed for his time in coming up with the fake documents. He billed for the meeting with the FBI. So he's red-handed here. He's red-handed in, in misleading the FBI about who he's representing and where he's getting the information. Now, turns out Sussman's firm, by the way, which is called Perkins Coey, is part of this democratic sort of bag of dirty tricks operation. By the way, Mark Elias, a major um, figure in the Clinton campaign, general counsel to the Clinton campaign, also a partner of this firm. By the way, Sussman and, and Elias have now both resigned, uh, have both left the firm. So what you, what's going on here is that you have it in a, a kind of triangular uh, co collusion uh, between the Hillary campaign, which is paying for this, this guy Sussman and his law firm, and it turns out very interestingly, an unnamed 
tech executive. Now, who is this tech executive? I can't wait to find out. The indictment doesn't say. Uh, could it be one of the big names? Um, uh, Sundar Pinchai at uh, Google or uh, Zuckerberg? Uh, it's not clear, but we know that it's a high up guy. Why? Because this is the guy who says that he's looking forward to being offered a top job in the Clinton administration. So he thinks Clinton's gonna win. He's looking for a top job. It looks like his role in producing this kind of fake um, uh, frame up is aimed at endearing himself to the Clinton people. He's sort of delivering for them. Now, how does he work? This tech guy apparently uh, gets all these other quote researchers and he tells them to go look for stuff on Trump. And in fact, he tells him, listen, you don't even really need proof. His point is, he says, it's all that you need is enough uh, to get the FBI, quote, a useful narrative. In other words, we just need enough that the FBI is gonna jump on it, we're then gonna leak it to the media, we've got the story. So now, internally, in Durham, this is where Durham's digging pays off, he discovers that these researchers kind of know that they're doing a fake operation. In fact, one of them basically says, listen, there's no there there. Um, now, some of these research are totally in on it. In fact, one of them says, listen, the way we can link these different entities that are actually separate, that have no dealings with each other, is we can create fake sales forms uh, and it'll make it appear like these entities, the bank and so on, are, are actually dealing with each other. So if the FBI looks, they go, yeah, there's some suspicious uh, activity between otherwise unrelated entities. In other words, the activity is being faked. It's being, it's being essentially planted by the researchers. But even after they do that, one of the researchers, and this guy is just basically um, described uh, without being named, is he goes, listen, he goes, folks, I'm afraid we have tunnel vision, time to regroup. I'm now quoting him also. He goes, let's assume they're not smart enough to refute our best case scenario. In other words, let's assume that the Trump people are not smart enough to figure out that we planted this. He goes, you do realize we will have to expose every trick we have in our bag to make even a very weak association. So he's basically saying, we've got to pull out all the stops of lies in order to even create the appearance of something. There's nothing really here at all. Uh, so these guys know what's going on. They know that they're part of a, of a fraud. And I'm hoping that Durham indicts all of them, indicts the tech executive, indicts all these co-conspirators. And in fact, one of the researchers says, quote, the only thing that drives us at this point is that we just do not like Trump. Whoa. Now, the beauty of all this is that the reason that these people do this is they know that the FBI will jump, A, and B, they know the media will play along. So who's the big sucker here? And I won't call him a sucker. I actually have met this weasel a few times. He's one of these, he works for Slate Magazine. His name is Franklin Four, F-O-E-R. And of course, this guy jumps on it. He does a big article in Slate. Uh, and the theme of the article, of course, is yes, there's been disturbing connections between Trump and the Russian Alpha Bank. Now, the sneaky thing about Four, and if you meet the guy, you'll see right away, this is the kind of guy who's sneaky. I mean, you just have to kind of hold onto your wallet while you're talking to him, is that he talks about the fact, he says, quote, a, a group of scholarly digital researchers has discovered this incriminating data. Little does he say, no, it was a tech executive in, in bed with the Clinton campaign looking for a job who put up his, his, his cronies to do this, to fake this. Four acts like, no, independent researchers all over the world are like, whoa, what do we have here? So a completely fake operation. And then the beauty of it is after MSNBC jumps on it, after all the media jumps on it, you've got major articles all over the place, uh, all about these links between Trump and the Alpha Bank. Jake Sullivan, by the way, is talking about it. Um, of course, uh, Rachel Maddow's all over it. And finally, this is the beauty of it. Hillary Clinton weighs in. Here's, here's Hillary Clinton's tweet. I'm going to read it to you because it's, it's, it just shows that this is the kind of the mistress of deceit. Quote, computer scientists have apparently, un apparently uncovered. It's actually her work. Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump organization to a Russian base bank. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the Democratic Party in a nutshell. They cook up a false report. They then drop it on the FBI, knowing that those goons will be like, yeah, let's look into it. You know? <laughs> and then the media, yeah, we can count on these suckers. Let's call Franklin for you. Yeah, hello, yes, I'm ready. You know? <laughs> and then Hillary Wazen, what do I see here? Wait a minute. 
hold on, Trump is colluding with Russia. <laughs> this is the this is the the stupidity at the end of it, because because you know Durham's busted it all. But this is the sort of diabolical operation here. You feel like you're in the opening scene of Paradise Lost, where we're right in the bottom of Milton's hell.